Hello YouTube, Slapdash Maker here. This is one of the main inspirations for me to make a YouTube video because I could not find that much information on these Chinese sparkle welders. Whereas the kind of professional equivalents are about $2,000 and up. Uh, one of the manufacturers of those is Orion. And it just looks so cool and versatile what you can do with these, but there's not a lot of information on these cheap Chinese ones. So it's a pulse arc welder, but uh, Chinese, if you're searching for these, typically they'll say sparkle welder, just like you see here. Anyway, I'm going to do a full review on this, but first, let's have a look inside, shall we? All right, never opened this thing up yet. I wonder if it's what's in there. This is uh, pretty exciting. Let's check it out. What in the hell is this? It's got two little capacitors. The hell is, it's not even connected. Oh my God, quality control's ridiculous, but they did, they left a German capacitor in here just bouncing around holy hell boy i've noticed the thing's a little underpowered maybe if i hook this thing up we'll get a little more power out of it i'll have to check that out oh i was just kidding of course this wasn't shipped in here in this unit actually what you'll find when you open it is just this and uh this, believe it or not, 30 tape, roughly cut pieces of uh, foam packing material. Yeah, I'm trying to focus it, but you get the idea. Yeah, dirty tape, and this was simply placed on these capacitors to uh, keep the board from rattling around because it's only fixed on this side by these nuts. And this side, um, they had put some silicone, which uh, totally failed during shipping. But yeah, so this, I don't know if it's because the vibration induced during a pulse or what, but for whatever reason, this just rubs or rests on a uh, rubber stopper down here. And the board was just kind of meant to flex it a little bit, but mine came flopping around and this yeah this apparently didn't hold it together in fact this unit had a fair amount of shipping damage but it still works still works but it was underpowered and i saw mescal's video he had probably the most information on these sparkle welders and he's the only video i saw where he attempted an upgrade of it and right when I saw that, I'm like, all right, I'm going to give this thing a try. And, and shortly after I got it, I did some of the upgrades. Um, I'll show under the board a little later. I have uh, additional wiring in addition to the traces. And also beefed these wires, the output, the final output, out, up a little bit. This is just 14 gauge. Uh, I think Mescal had 8 gauge laying around. I didn't have anything at the time. And I've just got them popped out the front here. And this is a temporary connection. Believe it or not though, even despite this manky looking job here, uh, it's actually, it did improve the power a bit. Um, but I have the 30 amp version of this and Mescal has the 50. There's also an 80 amp version. And what I noticed watching Miss Kel's video, which I'll link in the description, is he has three of these capacitors. I have two. And there's a spot for another one. So I'm guessing the 30 amp model, hopefully the same guts otherwise. And uh, from looking at all his uh, 
shots on his video, everything looks pretty damn identical, except the absence of a capacitor. So these are safety capacitors in place. So I was thinking, yeah, the 30 amp model has two, the 50 has three, and the 80, I'm guessing, has four, because there's yet another spot, and his also has this uh, blank spot. So <laughs> I go out. I'm like, all right, I'm going to buy a capacitor. I want a good one, though. I want quality, you know? Who who knows how good these are anyway? So I get a capacitor with the same rating. I didn't really look at the size. And as you saw, this is what I ended up with. But I think I can make it fit. But yeah, it's rated the same. Same rating. So, uh, you know, I think it'll work fine. They're both electrolytic and... Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, when I do a test run, definitely going to power it on. Have a fire extinguisher in, <laughs> nearby. Um, obviously, I think the only way without cutting the case I can fit this in here is something kind of like this. And uh, I'll just have to have it supported and then just run the wires. I'm going to remove this safety capacitor and leave that one and run the wires to these leads. Nice screw leads though, so I'll be able to remove it without too much trouble. So yeah, I just gotta rig up uh, something to kind of hold it steady and then also just run the wire off the board. And uh, also uh, I will beef the connections up between these three at that time. These two are tied together with additional wiring underneath currently, but I will, uh, yeah, have to, beef that spot up too so my champion capacitor is uh, also well connected because the theory on why the output was kind of weak on these and why Mescal got such improved results over uh, over what he had when he got it was the, the amount of metal connecting the capacitors to the output is just not enough to carry that kind of amperage that they're advertising and sure enough when he beefed it up a little he had beefed up results but i couldn't get quite as much power as i needed and i uh, just didn't have enough cap capatent capitance sorry all right well i'll uh work on this and see how it goes this is going to be a little more involved Whenever you're doing something involved, don't forget your demon killers. You're going to need them. Tiny progress update here. I've got these leads for the new capacitor soldered up through here. Feeding up into here so I can hook it up. Unfortunately, the holes are too small here to really get a big wire on here. I can change that if needed, but really, it's still just as connected as the other ones. And yeah, this is the work I did earlier. This is a uh, 14 gauge or 16 gauge solid copper. And then for the output, though, I think this will be nice. I uh, scraped away the stuff on the PCB so I can get a nice big connection because this is really kind of a weak point you know if you don't have a good connection here but now I got the 10 gauge I'm gonna go about like that yeah do some work on that one yet Let's see how it goes I notice all the all the main output goes through this one transformer which is pretty it's got some pretty damn wimpy wires so this seems like a weak point but there's nothing i can do about that but you know i'll beef it up where i can and that seems to help all right the 10 gauge soldered on these are some truly massive solder joints for this supposedly 30 watt iron but the thing you turn it to max it's kind of a new design of an iron as far as I've seen. It's got a ceramic element right in the tip or, you know, inside the metal part anyway. And the thing will glow red hot. So, 
it's 30 watts, but boy, that thing can concentrate the heat. So yeah, these are freaking heavy. That's a lot of solder. But it melted through. Very nice. All right. I bet you're laughing now. She ain't the prettiest, but... Well, actually she is. I like her. All right, here's the... Well, I think it's close enough to being finished. Um, I thought about some kind of mounting for this guy. Because it's just wedged in right now. Against that transformer. And against this transformer, which are mounted solidly. And then just with a little padding around. So, although that's pretty hokey. Honestly, there's not a lot of room for this to move. And if it did shake around, it's probably not going to... There's, I don't see anything that it could hit and short out on, and I'd notice if it was rattling around in there. Uh, as long as I don't move the thing around a bunch, yeah, I don't think it'll be a problem. So, time to fire it up.